Hey guys, Larry Chen here. So this is a video that's gonna be really difficult for me to do, but I think it's important enough. So this may be the car of the show for me at Tokyo Auto Salon. I mean, I think it actually is. So this is called the 935 ML, built by this young individual who's 29 years old in Japan, in Osaka area. His company is called Mad Lane. He found a real 935 K4 hatch, which is pretty much what you see here in the US in terrible used condition that was falling apart, that had a lot of holes, that had a lot of Bondo. And what they did is they actually brought it to Japan and they refinished it and they added a bunch of things and they, they basically rebuilt it. And they started out with a 964. What, this is what's crazy to me. Essentially, once they found the hatch for the K4, that's when the build really kicked off. And that's what pretty much shaped the rest of the car. So they got it from an old racer who had it as a spare, only two real 935 K4s ever existed. So his estimation was maybe five of those hatches were made, three of them being spares. And then of course this one was well used. So it's just such a crazy story. And this is really showing the new generation of Japanese tuner. It's not just about uh, bolt-on parts, and it's not just about style, it's about performance, it's about functionality, it's about insane fabrication. I, I didn't understand as much as I could, but I'm, I'm just trying to regurgitate it for you guys because I think this is a very important story. So, the front end is something that he created from three different front cowls. So he got a front cowl from DP Motorsports, which um, I've had a chance to visit in Germany. They build incredible cars. He got a front end from Kramer in Germany as well. And he also got a front end from Mad Car in the US. They make a lot of Porsche fiberglass parts. It's three different ones in one. The tube frame, it actually starts about right here. And I asked him, how is it that he was able to get the geometry correct? How is it that he was able to weld everything together for suspension pickup points and everything to make it like a actual K4? Well, apparently they found the original blueprints to the chassis for them to get it millimeter close. So this, this is a full on race car. It does have air jacks, which is just so cool. Huge fuel cell in the front. So much of this is custom. Okay, so this really blew me away. He told me that his dad uh, growing up was really big into modifying Ferraris and Lamborghinis. He got his inspiration from his dad who modified Lamborghinis, modified Ferraris. Um, he was into racing and he was into cars, so obviously it passed it on in the craziest way possible. I mean, look at this thing. This thing is just so much. One of the other things that he let me know about is the fact that he got a real Moby Dick wheels in very, very good condition from his contact in Germany. And they actually rebuilt them in Japan to make them look brand new. I forgot to add that the tires are actually Yokohama slicks. It actually does say for competition use only, but it's a 330, 330 wide, 18. Let's talk about the wing. This is a Lamborghini Diablo GTR wing that they fit on the original K4 cowl. This taillight design is just a generic third brake light that you would put on any race car. So he just got six of them to make the taillights. I think it looks so good. 
All of this is custom. All of this is custom bodywork. This little LED strip for the third brake light is from a Decatora truck or what, 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 what a lot of individuals in Japan would use uh, on their Decatora trucks. This is all custom. This is uh, normally Lexan to let the hot air out, but they actually had to make this custom. The doors they actually bought from DP Motorsports, but that's kind of where it ends. This, all of this, all of this, this is all custom. And check this out. You guys won't believe the clearance on this door. Look at this. I've just never seen anything like this, look. So there is a limit strap here. So uh, in order for you to not destroy the front cowl and the door, and there's also some bumpers, but how amazing is that? It opens more than enough for you to get in. What a crazy build. Let's talk about the roof real quick. He cut the original metal roof off and they got two fiberglass roofs and that's what allowed them to get this shape. Because if you just have the stock roof, what it does is it goes down and it follows the rest of the uh, body line here, the window. But in order to extend it to accept the K4 hatch, they had to put two roofs together to make one. The front glass is not a 964 glass. It's from a 1969 911 narrow body, which is clear. The glass is clear because race cars didn't have colored glass, right? So the 964, it, it's like has a little tint to it and plus the top of it had a tint. So they wanted to make it just like the K4 as much as possible. Back hatch window is Lexan. This is all Lexan. This is all new race car parts. They custom made the turbo fans, which I think looks super cool. For aero, they even go as far as to create this lip in order for it to flow better around this area because normally what happens is it actually dips in. You can see it follows the drip rail. This is all modified here to make it as aerodynamic as possible. The paint is original Porsche Grand Prix white. Color code is P5. They actually painted it at Mad Lane. All right, they're gonna put the hood on right now. So the builder is Kazuki-san right here. He, um, he's kind of just walking me around it and uh, I'm, I'm just slowly regurgitating everything he's telling me, but it's a lot of information. I, I just love that it has no livery. It's just showing off the lines that it has. It's beautiful. Okay, here we go. Let's talk about the engine bay. There's a lot to unpack. So this is original 964 engine from the donor car, but now it's a fully built 3.8 liter, flat six, air-cooled, still air-cooled. The actual uh, flat fan design is special because as you guys probably already know, the 964 had a horizontal fan. And there's a company in California that actually builds this kit. It, it pretty much comes with everything you need to make this work as a flat fan build. It, it's twin turbo. It's running uh, turbos that are the same as what they ran on the K4 back then. I guess they're called K27 turbos. The exhaust manifold is Inconel, because of course it is. So it is a direct injection now, and the estimated horsepower is gonna be 700 to 800 horsepower to the wheels, which is gonna be a lot to handle. The suspension is really insane. It's a cantilever setup that was actually inspired from some of the roof cars. Uh, our best guess is going to be the roof CTR2. The actual intake manifolds are billet and they're actually designed and made in Japan. Okay, so I'm looking at underneath the hatch and honestly, it looks brand new. I don't really see that many 
repairs, but I see a lot of reinforcement. I'm assuming that they redid a lot of the fiberglass because when they got it, it was falling apart and really dirty and used. But underneath it looks, looks very, very, very clean. One thing I forgot to talk about is the transmission setup. This is when it gets really insane. So it is a 997 RSR Hollinger transmission that is air shifted, paddle shifters. But the crazy thing is the transmission was mounted upside down in order for them to be able to put the engine that low. I don't really even know where to begin to understand all of this stuff. This is just so beyond me and it's very, very inspirational to see. So what is this actually gonna be used for? Well, it's going to be used for time attack events, specifically Tsukuba here in Japan and also the Motorhead Hill Climb which happens uh, in southern Japan near ok Okayama. Hopefully that's something that I can actually go to and I can actually see this thing run for the very first time. That would be so much fun. He ran me through the interior, but I'll just kind of run you guys through it very quickly. Look how clean this is. Look how finished the interior is. Just the door area. Cool little door pole. The floor was uh, cut and raised eight centimeters. We got an AP racing pedal box there. You can see the steering wheel um, on there are the actual paddle shifters. DP Motorsport gauges. Um, the gauge on the right of the tack is for the Hollinger gearbox to tell you what gauge you're in. It has uh, um, adjustable sway bars, front and rear. It's running a Motec M1 system, Motec PDM, saw belt seat. This is, I just love how finished everything is. Oh, they, they made this crazy center console to kind of match the current race cars. From that era, there pretty much was no center console. It was just like a flat floor and just like a one piece dash, kind of like a lot of the, the street cars. This dial that says dead or alive, plus or minus, that's actually the boost dial. So the more you turn it up to 1.2 bar, the more boost and then uh, yeah, so on and so forth. What's really good about this build is I am gonna guess that this is gonna be a lot safer than a lot of the original Porsche race cars. If you ever get to see a K3 or a K4 in person, just check out the roll cage it looks like it's just a bunch of aluminum tubing. Legit, it's so thin compared to what we have now for safety standards in terms of roll cages. Big shout out to our major sponsors for this whole Japan series. My friends at KW and of course Yokohama Tire brought us out to shoot in Japan this time. That's why we're featuring all these incredible cars. And of course, to our major channel sponsors, Pennzoil and Type S. They believe in car culture, they believe in what we do, and we love to support the people that support us. So see you guys in the next video. Hey, thanks for watching. If you wanna support us directly, go to LarryChenPrints.com. I print and sign every single one of these. This is the perfect gift, or it's the perfect piece of art for your wall.